and uh, fellow South Africans, we apologize for starting late, even though it's not our fault. We all know what the country is going through, and therefore we had a load shedding and thought uh, we can source some interventions from generator, uh, which was also uh, disappointing. Nevertheless, we are here. The Economic Freedom Fighters is concerned about the continued degeneration and devastation of South Africa under the corrupt misguidance of uh, the current administration of Cyril Ramaphosa and the entire collective of a failed former liberation movement. We know that the former liberation movement, like all of them in the African continent, is not a solution to the people of South Africa. Rather, the conditions of our people are getting worse and all systems that guarantee dignity of our people are crumbling. Since Ramaphosa assumed office as the president of South Africa, there is a crisis after crisis, and worse, the quality of lives and livelihoods for millions of our people are degenerating. More than 12 million South Africans are jobless, and those who had jobs when Ramaphosa took office are also losing their jobs. Those who are employed and self-employed are drowning in debt and poverty because of the rising price of fuel, food, transport, and all other basic necessities and services. The supply of electricity is at its worst stage since 1994, with ESCOM dismally and devastatingly failing to provide dependable electricity to households, business, and public institutions. This happens despite the so many promises by the current administration that load shedding will never happen again. What this means is that on several occasions, Ramaphosa has deliberately misled the people of South Africa. He has effectively told lies about the state of ESCOM and its ability to provide electricity. The president is a liar and a swindler who makes empty promises and does not get held accountable. What is evident out of this electricity crisis in South Africa is that the former liberation movement under its current misguidance of a puppet president is on the path to destroy ESCOM in the same way they are destroying all other strategic state-owned companies. The sitting government has manufactured, manufactured the ESCOM electricity crisis because they want to create space for independent power producers who are, largely, who are largely companies from the West working with the close friends, handlers, and family members of the sitting president. The ultimate aim is to destroy and then privatize ESCOM, something the EFF will never agree to. South Africa's sovereignty to provide its own electricity has been surrendered by the current president, and this is evidenced by the fact that it was the U.S. President Joe Biden who announced that South Africa will decommission all coal power stations and action that will increase the levels of unemployment and poverty of our people. Moreover, just a week ago, the British Parliament was discussing the electricity situation in South Africa and spoke about possible solutions as if South Africa is a colonial outpost and not an independent state that must determine its own destiny. We want to assure our historical and current friends, particularly China, Russia, India, and Brazil, that we in South Africa are still loyal to economic, political, and social relationships, and that Ram Ramaphosa's friendship with the West does not represent the will of the people of South Africa. In seeking the ultimate energy and electricity solution, we are going to work closely with China and Russia because they have demonstrated thus far that they have superior energy alternatives. Ramaphosa will leave very soon and will restore our political and economic partnership and common prosperity. Under the current administration and misguidance of a puppet and a criminal president, the level of crime remains high and the South African police services is not doing anything about it. It is almost two months since the murder of Hilary Gadi. The police have not yet provided a solid and believable case as to what happened and for what purpose. Young children died in a tavern in East London. There is still no sound reason as to what exactly happened. Fifteen people were massacred with automatic rifles in Soweto a week ago, and the police have not yet provided a sound explanation as to what exactly happened. 
All this to show that we are slowly degenerating into a lawless state, a banana republic where criminals can do as they please without any consequences. The extent of criminal murders, rape, gender-based violence is also on the rise despite the empty commitment of the current government to combat these horrible crimes. Many other crimes are on the rise and nothing is happening to protect our people. Our people are not safe and the government is nowhere to protect them. Innocent people are being killed in massacres and no one is protecting them. The police are not acting on serious crimes and are even turning a blind eye on massive acts of money laundering, racketeering, violation of South Africa's currency regulations, as well as on the illegal law enforcement by Cyril Ramaphosa and his gangsters after the revelations of millions of dollars at the Palapala farm. We know, as a matter of fact, that millions of dollars that were hidden in Palapala and many other properties of the sitting president are not proceeds of game sale. We know that the police, the South African Reserve Bank, the South African Revenue Services, the Financial Intelligence Center, and all law enforcement agencies are fully aware that the sitting president has violated many laws of the Republic of South Africa and nothing is being done about it. The Speaker of Parliament is also refusing to conduct an inquiry on the many violations of laws committed by the sitting government. The EFF wrote parliamentary questions to the Cyril Ramaphosa to ask him to explain where the money comes from and to also disclose the other millions hidden in his properties, but he chose to violate the rules of Parliament and the Constitution and has not responded to any of the questions we sent to him. We, as the EFF, have also written to the South African Reserve Bank, South African Revenue Services, Financial Intelligence Center, and all relevant structures to demand that Sir Ramas Posa be held accountable and nothing is being done about it. As a revolutionary movement, a responsible and decisive movement of the people of South Africa, we have now decided to engage in the following activities. The EFF will approach the courts of South Africa to compel the South African Reserve Bank, the South African Revenue Services, the Financial Intelligence Center, and Ramaphosa to honestly answer to all the questions we have sent to them. The EFF will approach the courts of South Africa to compel Parliament to conduct a thorough and transparent investigation of all the crimes committed by Cyril Ramaphosa with the aim of building a solid case of an impeachment. The EFF will approach all political parties in Parliament, including the ANC, to engage on a motion of no confidence against Cyril Ramaphosa as a President of South Africa. The EFF will also form part of all the progressive formations and the organization in South Africa to plan and engage a national shutdown which will seek to remove Cyril Ramaphosa from office while also making the following additional demands. An end to load shading and the immediate dissolution of the ESCOM board and firing, all, firing of all senior managers including the CEO and the COO. The reduction of fuel prices to prices of 2018 and subsequent mechanism of regulating the rise of fuel prices, an end to privatization of state-owned companies and the immediate resignation of Praveen Jamnandas Godan, an end to crime and the removal of the current Minister of Police, Begitele, a basic income grant which will protect the poorest of the poor from the current poverty and starvation levels an immediate arrest of Sir Ramaphosa to account for all the crimes he committed in Palapala Farm, an immediate end to the Western forces, particularly Britain and U.S., for interfering in South Africa's energy policy and direction, the nature and character of a national shutdown which the EFF will partake in will not be a candle holding and white flags types of a shutdown. It will be a shutdown that must communicate to the sitting government that enough is enough. We cannot fold our arms and do nothing when our country is being sold to the dogs. The EFF calls on all the people of South Africa to join on the national shutdown to demand our country back from an incompetent, directionless, and criminal syndicate that enjoys protection of white monopoly capital and its media. 
We have done it before when the Gupta criminal syndicate tried to undermine our sovereignty. Let us rise and protect our country from this puppet of both domestic and global capitalist forces. We, as the EFF, stand firmly behind the fearless public protector, advocate Wusisiwam Kweban. We know that the reason why Sir Ramaphosa rushed to suspend her is because he was avoiding the 31 questions she asked regarding Palapala Farm and the so many laws that were violated. Parliament must never allow to be co-opted into factional and crime-hiding activities to an extent of protecting an individual at the expense of principle. Ramaphosa is still obliged to answer to all the questions given to him because the Executive Ethics Court the Executive Ethics Code obliges oblige him to respond to questions of the public protector truthfully and timelessly. The EFF supports a motion that Mr. Ramaphosa must physically appear before the Section 194 Committee in Parliament to answer to the questions of why he suspended the public protector, amongst others, when he is unquestionably conflicted and refusal to do so will amount to judicial irrationality. Parliament is a legislative and oversight instrument of South Africa's democratic order and must never be found wanting. When the Fifth Democratic Parliament failed to hold former President Jacob Zuma accountable, the Constitutional Court passed a judgment that chastised Parliament's failure to hold former President Zuma accountable. As such, we refuse to be part of the members of Parliament who will fold arms when our laws are violated by sitting head of state and government. We refuse to be useless parliamentarians who do nothing when the executive violates the laws of this country. Who will respect the laws, who will respect the rule of law if a sitting head of state does not respect the law? Who must comply with foreign currency regulations when a sitting head of state does not comply? Who must respect SARS and pay tax when the so-called president does not? Who must respect law enforcement agencies and South Africa's criminal justice system when a sitting head of state chooses a gangsterism approach of hunting those who stole what appear to be stolen dollars from him? We refuse to turn a blind eye against crimes committed by Cyril Ramaphosa. He is not above the law and he will never be above the law because we will not allow him to be above the law. We call on all ground forces of the EFF to continue with the commendable work of recruiting thousands of our people into the ranks of the EFF, and we appreciate that if our momentum is not slowed down, we'll reach the one million membership target before December 2022. Over the next few months, in all provinces across the country, the EFF will be holding their provincial people's assemblies, which will elect new provincial leadership. As we said before, we call for maximum discipline in all PPAs and in all branch general and people's assemblies that are taking place all over South Africa. Moreover, the EFF Student Command will be holding its fourth National Student Assembly from the 22nd to the 24th of July 2022, which will be attended by more than 750 delegates from universities, universities of technology, and Tibet colleges from more than 290 campuses. The EFF Student Command is currently the only reliable and dependable voice of the students and the youth in South Africa, and so those who are delegates to the 4th National Student Assembly should exercise maximum discipline and must produce a political program and agenda that will fight for the attainment of quality, free, and decolonized education for all. Furthermore, on the 26th of July 2022, the EFF will be turning nine years, disproving many prophets of doom who had said that our organization will never live beyond its first conference. As the EFF, we have demonstrated beyond any doubt that we are the only stable and disciplined emancipation movement of the people of South Africa. The rally to celebrate the ninth anniversary of the EFF will take place at the Dr. Mulemela Stadium in Bloemfontein, Mangaung, on Saturday, the 30th of July, 2022, and we invite all activists and all the people of South Africa to come in their numbers. The EFF reiterates its rejection of the appointment of 76-year-old Pani Pichana as the chair of the Lottery Commission. Pichana's appointment is rooted in the 
attempted capture of the institution by, Ephraim, by Ibrahim Patel and his cronies in order to ensure his friends and business associates win a manipulated lottery license that is due for renewal in July 2023. We call on Pijani to reject this appointment in defense of his legacy, which will be tainted by what looks like greed and lack of consciousness on his part. The prevailing conditions confronting the youth of South Africa are dire, and this hopelessness is increased by the insistence of this regime to sideline young people. Lastly, we welcome the decision by the University of Cape Town to honor the sporting legend and founder of Keza Chief Football Club, Dr. Keza Mutawu, with honorary doctorate. It was at the second National People's Assembly of the EFF in 2019 where we long declared that Keza Mutawu is a doctor. Dr. Mutawu, invaluable contribution to football development as a player, administrator, and a founder of one of the biggest brands in the continent is admirable and must be celebrated. This is because Dr. Mutawu built an institution without any white supervision and in the midst of the brutality of apartheid and his success is a testament to the black excellence which must be emulated by all. The EFF also welcomes the election of Chief Fortune Charumbira as the president of the Pan-African Parliament. For the first time, the institution is led by a member of SADC region under the principle of rotation which was fought for bitterly. The EFF calls on the Pan-African Parliament to mold itself into a legislative institution with authority across the continent. President Charumbira must lead efforts to root out intolerance, persecution, war, divisions, and poverty across Africa and never allow imperialists to dictate the path the continent takes politically, economically, and otherwise. The immediate task of the Chief Fortune Charumbira must be to make sure that the required number of parliamentarians in the African continent ratify the revised protocol of the Pan-African Parliament. Additionally, we have to build a closer relationship with all Africans in the diaspora, particularly the Caribbeans, because Africans face similar challenges in all parts of the world and we have a common destiny. In conclusion, we reiterate our call for Cyril Ramaphosa to step down as a president of South Africa and caution him that he must not test our patience. We have been patient for far too long and we have acted within the provided institutions and there is nothing happening. Ramaphosa is not above the law and no one is above the law. The tendency of buying people and buying judges and corrupting our country must come to an end. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commander-in-Chief and President of the EFF. We will now take uh, two rounds of questions. So we will start with the SABC. One of you must decide between the two of you will take the question. Uh, newsroom. And then uh, Times Live, no question. And then uh, Times Live. So SABC, Newsroom, and uh, Times Live. <laughs> Ladies first. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Mr. Manema, I want to ask on the motion of no confidence in uh, President Ramaphosa. How confident is the EFF that it's going to uh, receive support from these political parties as they've not stated outright that we are at that stage yet. Uh, specifically, we uh, spoke to the DA's uh, federal chair, Helen Zilla, last week or a few weeks ago. And when we probed her on this matter, her answer was along the lines of the EFF must do what it has to do and the DA caucus in parliament will do what it needs to do. Um, that answer doesn't really inspire confidence on whether you'll be successful in this task of um, bringing this motion of no confidence in parliament against Ramaphosa. What is your response to that? Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Abongile Tumago, SABC News. Um, Shagaz, with, with regards to the, the, the tavern deaths, uh, remember in your being as well, as you have already said on your statement that you haven't seen much progress uh, in as far as investigations are concerned. What's the EFF view on, on how police minister in particular is, is sort of doing his job regarding 
to the fact that he would be quick to go to the scene, make promises, and he doesn't seem to deliver in as far as that is concerned. That's number one. Number two, Advocate Diff uh, dropped a bombshell just um, recently and said he's pulling out on the on the Senzo Mayua case happening at the Pretoria High Court, citing a reason, among others, that the office of the president has, has, has had a bit of an influence in him coming to that decision, including him being threatened by that office. That's quite shocking. What's your view on that? And lastly, uh, seeing that you guys will be celebrating your birthday in the free state, is it because of the fact that we've seen uh, the suspended Secretary General of the ANC mingling with you in Soweto recently? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Nongulu Lego from the Sunday Times. Mr. Malema, just on the Palapala matter, you say you will approach you know, the courts to compel President Cyril Ramaphosa to answer questions on the alleged cover-up. Um, this is despite you previously saying you have literally no confidence in the judge and even going further saying uh, the current cohorts of judges are just old, lazy people. Have you changed your mind about them? And how confident are you that they'll handle um, the litigation um, without you know, any bias? Thank you. Newsroom. Mbali Titani from Newsroom Africa. Mr. Malema, just touching on what my colleague um, Kenny was saying in terms of the motion of no confidence. In the past, you didn't have such a good relationship uh, with the DA, and you're also saying that uh, you will also be speaking to some people within the ANC. A number of them have not been forthcoming when it comes to commenting on the Palapala issue, especially in the ANC. Do you think it is not a futile exercise to approach them? And when it comes to the DA, are you confident enough that uh, you will be able uh, to sway them in your favor? You know, can you speaking about uh, the likes of Helen Zilla, um, you know, the last time you said that you will never vote uh, with the DA. What is your position in that uh, regard? When it comes to the last time we were here, uh, it was the arrest of the Guptas. Um, you said that it was a diversion of events. Do you still maintain the same? Thank you. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much. Um, when it comes to motion of no confidence, our approach is going to be a bit um, uh, different in that we are going to speak to all political parties uh, in Parliament, including the DA and the ANC. It's not some people in the ANC. We are going to write an official communique to the ANC and ask them to agree with us that a motion of no confidence must be passed. I will tell you why. President Ramaphosa has confessed to his caucus, his own faction, that he's got no defense on the money, that the money was illegal, and that uh, he's got no answers, and therefore he must step down. It is alleged that amongst others, it was Zaman Sol, uh, Oscar, Mab Oscar Mabuyani, Stelan Daveni, and them, who said to him, he must not resign, they will defend him. But the president has made a concession to his faction and to his core that he has got no moral uh, defense to those things. That's why you see the president can answer both to parliamentary questions or to any question. The president has got no reason not to answer because he has not been charged. So he can't say the matter is, uh, when the matter is in court, they say, subjudicate. He can't say the matter is subjudicate. So the president has got no answer, and he has made that concession. And the, he's held there by a faction that feels, the likes of Lamola and them, that feels that if he leaves, they are going to become a collateral damage and therefore they will have to live with him. So we are confident that the ANC people will themselves accept that the motion of no confidence must be put on the president if he does not uh, step down. The DA will have to defend the president. The DA will have to vote for violation of all laws of the land. The president has violated all laws of the land and the president has got no answer even to the DA itself. So if the DA decides to vote against the motion of no confidence, 
then the people of South Africa must choose what they want. But we are not going to fold our arms when we see open violation of the laws of the country because we think we won't get sufficient support. History will absolve us. That's why when Mukwe Mukwe passes judgment on Zuma and Kandla issue and say parliament did not play its oversight role, some of us, we don't feel affected because we know he doesn't refer to us. We played our role. The majority voted against us. So we want just not motion of no confidence. That's why we're going through a thorough process to talk to everyone. Then we want a committee, a parliamentary committee, similar to the one we formed on Kant. This Nosi Viwe, the fact that she's rejecting to form that committee, it's a demonstration that she's defending corruption. South Africa, we had the committee during the investigation of Nkant. Because some of you, you, you forget easily, let's remind you. And it, uh, the EFF communication, if it exists, it must also help you to go and fetch those videos. It was a, a parliament committee that went to Nkandla to go and inspect Nkandla. That's when we were shown the fire pool, when the firefighters were holding something that looks like a, a, a pipe of a fire extinguisher. Them, they're saying it's a fire pool, it's referring to a pool that was designed like a lava or something. So who was heading that committee? It was headed by Minister of Human Settlement, Kubaya. We're not asking for something that was not done before. It was done before. We want to go to Palapala. We cannot hold President accountable properly if we don't know how the bed looks like and if that bed really can hide money or not. We want to go to Palapala to check if those couches can hide money. How, how did the criminals get in? There must be an inquiry by parliament. From there, it must call him to come and answer. And he can't lie to parliament. We are not preparing an ordinary motion of no confidence. We seek impeachment. Cyril must live with nothing. He has violated the people of South Africa. He has violated his own party. I mean... The ANC workers goes for days and days without salaries. A man is sleeping on top of dollars. And those cowards are quiet, all of them. The party is going to be uh, liquidated. It's owing hundreds of millions. A man is sleeping on top of uh, uh, dollars. And because they are cowards, they don't say anything. We are not going to be party to that. And we require no majority to speak the truth. The truth will remain the truth, even if it's spoken by the minority. This DA, when we came into parliament in 2024, I mean 2014, it was wishy-washy on Nkandla. When we stood up and took Nkandla radically and militantly, took it on, it was this DA that condemned us and called us hooligans and all of that. Or because they are slow learners, given the fact that their leader is, is challenged academically, they are, they are slow learners. They came late to the party. Like many of you South Africans, you came late to the party. You went to drink alcohol, you went to churches, you went to funerals, you condemned the EFF and said the EFF was doing the wrong thing by holding a president accountable. What, did, what happened? The EFF stood firm. Because it knew it's telling the truth. And history absorbed in our lifetime the EFF because the ANC for the first time in the history of that caucus went to its own caucus in parliament and took a resolution, which you are not talking about, to vote with the EFF on a motion of no confidence. That's when Zuma resigned after a night before he refused to resign. The ANC went into a caucus, something historic that nobody speaks about. As we celebrate our nine years, we are the first party that made the ANC to agree with in the opposition benches to pass a motion of no confidence on a sitting president. That's when Zuma rushed to call a press conference and resigned. 
This ANC came to party late at that time. Even now, it will come to the party. Who said the ANC never agreed with us in Parliament about a motion of no confidence? Who, who could have imagined that at that time? So if it could happen that time, I'm answering the question, do you think the ANC will agree with you? The ANC agreed with us before. Paul Mashatile is the one who was presiding over that meeting. If he's truthful, he will tell you because he's a chameleon. He likes changing and lying in the process. He was chairing that meeting. They came to us and said, guys, withdraw the motion of no confidence. We will put the motion of no confidence. So we said, no, you are going to vote on our motion. They went back to give a report that the EFF is refusing. We have no option but to vote with the EFF. We are going to see the history repeating itself if President Ramaphosa does not resign. Well, we don't have a police minister. Um, and, and we made this call a long time ago. But the reason maybe why he's preferred is because he's able to control the police internally so that the president does not get arrested. That's why he can keep his job. Who keeps his job after so many children have died in the Eastern Cape? Who keeps, keeps his job with such levels of reported cases of rape Rape has become so fashionable to a point where it's even happening in places that we've never imagined, like uh, Toyando being one of the top four in our country. That's how everybody, including the people who are the most peaceful people, who are not violent, can see a vacuum and they're like, let's also commit crime because there's no police force here. We need our police back and we need them to come back with a firepower. These criminals are armed and they are not playing. And the police must make them meet their maker very soon in order to keep our streets safe. We have no business with criminals. Criminals who kill people, criminals who rape, criminals who engage in violent crimes must be dealt with decisively. We have a, a proper police commissioner, I don't know if he's a commissioner, that guy in, a, in a KZN. Uh, no, the one who was acting police commissioner after Riyapiyah or before. I don't know why I'm for, he was from a uh, counter-assault team. He's a, a proper, proper policeman. He was once an acting commissioner. They must go and fetch that guy to become a commissioner. He's got no business in pleasing people. The one who made an allegation now that during the July unrest, uh, uh, SAB was going to be attacked, and then he got 10 calls from 10 different ministers calling him to defend SAB. And he was asking, what's so special about SAB? He never got any call, not even from a minister of police. But when the Rioters were now going to SAB. He got 10 calls from ministers. So a, a police commissioner who can expose politicians like that, you can see this is a fearless police commissioner South Africa needs to deal with all these bastards who are destroying our country, to deal with politicians, to deal with drug lords who are in cahoots with politicians, to deal with criminals so that South Africa can be safe again. So if crime is now even going into rural areas, violent as it is, then there is no longer a safe place. We grew up being told that crime is in the townships and so on and suburbs. Now it's under control. It's not under control because of we don't have a minister. I really, you know, I'm very sympathetic with that case of Senzo Mewa. You need to get me the name of the person I'm talking about. Ntanzam Kwanas, yeah, Ntanzam Kwanas. He must be the commissioner of police, that guy, or anyone similar to that guy. I told Begitele when we were in uh, that place where the whites were trying to destroy a police station. 
Senegal, where it was me and when I came, I said to beg, this is the guy who must be a police commissioner, not these things you are offering to us all the time who are driven by corruption and not to protect the streets and protect the integrity of the uniform. Go and look at Ntantra Mkwanaz. Even his posture. Eh? The uniform is not going to be. Not the way that I have to do it. The way that I have to do it. Mkwanaz, when you look at him, you see a man in uniform who is disciplined, who is determined to deal with crime in South Africa. I'm very sympathetic to that issue of... Uh, Senzo Meiwa. But I'm not sympathetic to Advocate Tefu. He's disrespectful. And he thinks this thing is about him. He has made the whole case about him. And that's why we can sit here to be asked a question about the advocate instead of being asked, how is the case going? Are you happy? We're not being asked about the case. I think he speaks loosely. You know, I've got chickens where I stay. Ne? in Pulugwan, hard body. If you want one, I can give you. Mlekwa. <laughs> Even if they steal those chickens of mine, I will not call Advocate Tefu to represent me. Never. There is no skill at all. There is no decorum at all. He has got no respect for the bench at all. And he deserves no title of an advocate. I hope he doesn't belong to any bar because if there is any bar, it must take action on him. How does a lawyer, Floyd, say in court this fucked up situation? A lawyer? What trial? He undermines all of us, actually. You can't use such language in a court of law. You, you, you might disrespect that guy. But once he's sitting on top there, he's the court. Him, the day he's used such language, and the day he has been exchanging the way he was exchanging with the judge, I knew this guy deserves not to be called an advocate. For sure, it's those other advocates, you see, not of going to... That thing, what do you call it? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think he went to Pupulej, that one. Because the Pupulej will have taught him the discipline. We can be angry anyhow, but the courts must be respected. If he starts speaking like that to our judges, then everybody is going to do that. And then we'll have nowhere to run to. So I don't believe there is any Cyril who concocted anything on that guy. He's self-destructive, and he's got himself to blame. He throws people's names loosely. He doesn't back them up with anything. Look, we hold a view, and a very strong view, that Senzo was killed. And those people in the house know who killed Senzo. We're more than convinced. Personally, I'm more than convinced. Kelly knows. I'm more than convinced that she knows something. And for, there must be a way she must be held accountable. But it must be done in an orderly manner so that its outcome is, is not questionable. We are not celebrating in free state because of ACE. ACE is not a factor in the EFF. We exist with or without ACE. Um, we were celebrating in Cape Town. Um, uh, 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 yeah, the Gooks, in Gooks, we're going to Gooks. It was the structures of the EFF in Cape Town who said, July is not advisable in Cape Town. It's a rainy season, and uh, not just rainy, but also windy. And also that windy in Cape Town, yeah, we push our crowd to the So we're like, ah, with a rosa rofa speech, windy, it's a maloyen. So the best thing, let's find an alternative place. So our anniversary rotates. It goes to different uh, provinces. So that's how we found ourselves in the free state. But free state is also a correct place because everything has collapsed there. There's no government. 
our people live in a sewer, running sewer. Um, uh, the municipality has collapsed, put under administration. Uh, government is still controlled by the uh, RET forces. There is no clear direction of where uh, this thing is going. So um, we, we are at home when we are at Free State because Free State is the home of uh, the EFF. We call on all the domestic workers, security guards, the downtrodden, the poor masses of our people to come in their numbers to celebrate their only party which looks after them. I'm still to be reminded in which press conference or rally did I say I don't have confidence on judges. Because all I said was there's an attempt on the judicial capture. That's all I said. Uh, but, um, um, you know, a Sunday Times group, it will say what you are saying. Um, I never said that. I, I wish to be uh, given a reference to that point, that uh, you said this on this occasion. But all I said is there is an attempt to capture the judicial, and as the EFF will never allow that. Uh, we are going to litigate, we continue to litigate before our judges, when we are not happy with the outcome, we've got the recourse to appeal until the Constitutional Court, and we'll do that. I'm still waiting for the pictures of arrested Guptas. I'm still waiting. Um, um, I don't know if Floyd has got information of the case number that has been opened against the Guptas. Because for you to bring them back, you must first open a case and then uh, go to court to apply for extradition, for them to, for this one to apply there, for them to be extradited back into South Africa. There's no such a thing. It was too convenient to be told that Guptas are arrested right at the break of the story of Palapal. And they think that, they, they thought we were obsessed with Zuma and the Guptas. We told them we're not obsessed with Zuma and the Guptas. We're done with that page. We're on a new page now. This Palapala will be held accountable. And uh, they, 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 they've got nowhere to hide. The best thing, they must look for an alternative. They are a government now. Uh, D.D. Mabuza must be starting to take exercises and start jogging in the morning because I also saw it looks like the tummy is growing so that the suit can sit properly. They must start warming up. Uh, that position is available. The man is going. I can tell you now, the man is going. And no court or any board judge uh, will defend him. The president, even now on Mukwebani, must go. Must go to parliament to answer the questions on CR 17 must go and answer questions on uh, 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 suspension of Mkweban. He says he will never go. This is a man who were told when he got elected that the most transparent man, the most accountable man, Ramaphosa did everything under the sun to avoid accountability. And men, you can't love a person to that extent. You ought to reach a point where you say, mm-mm, this we cannot tolerate, and that is that point. We will announce the date of shutdown once a sufficient consultation has been made. And that shutdown is not going to be Johannesburg, Pretoria. It's going to be everywhere in Matatiele, in Musina. Once a call is made, no taxi, no truck will move. No single shop will be opened. No offices will be opened. All offices of ESCOM will be occupied to demand the, with the resignation of the CEO, the resignation of the board, and to reinstall, to put in people who have got capacity to run that institution. We don't believe that the ESCOM has reached the stage of hopelessness. There are a lot of skilled and qualified people that can be recalled to come and save the day. But for factional reasons, they will never call them them, even if we stay in darkness. 
because factions don't agree that the skill must be brought back, we would rather stay in darkness because of factional fights. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. This is the second and final round. If there are any more questions, we are all fine. Thank you very much, President Commander-in-Chief, the officials. That marks the end of the press conference.